and welcome everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, David. Now, I'm going to start here with Marie because, Marie, you were the very first interview, so almost 100 episodes ago. How much you have <laughs> aged since that, those <laughs> days? Uh, now, the reason Marie was the first interview was because Marie came up with the name The Art Hunter and the logo, and you made this badge specially oh, for the occasion. Yeah. So I had to have you <clears throat> as the first um, interview. And then all of a sudden you've gone on from strength to strength over those last, what, two and a half years As it's have been. you, David. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And the exhibition that we're talking mm. about today mm. is going to be at your gallery, which mm. is up upstairs from... That's uh, right, Melbourne Style Gallery. Uh, yep, which is on Melbourne. Clarendon Street in yep. South Melbourne. Uh, and what is it about architecture for you? I have a, a very well honed sense of place, David. I've been writing about Melbourne history for a long time and Melbourne's art history as well for a long time. And for me, it's about something that's in me that kind of connects to where I, le where I am and where I live. And, and it's not about, I don't know, um, just um, kind of blind, you know, jingoistic kind of sort of yay Melbourne. It's about really interrogating what goes on here and what makes it the place that it is. Yep. So you, you kind of criticise and praise in equal measure sometimes. You need to if you're really honest about where you're living. And, yep. it, and it, for me though, it, it um, the place that we live in, it has it, belonging and meaning is really what it comes down to yep. for me. And to explore it and you know, what it means to me. And what sort of style of art do you do? Because you're all very different. All five of you are extremely different. I use all kinds of medium, mixed medium. So I draw and I used to take more photos than I do now, but... Um, are you just lazy now or you become so famous? Well, no, no, the problem for me is that as a few of us here who started in advertising and graphic design and so on, and the deadlines in that discipline are so fast that you can't stop the ideas coming once they start coming. You get geared to a cycle of output that's pretty prodigious and it's pushing you all the time and you can't turn the ideas off. Mm. So, you know, for example, with this particular um, collection of works of Melbourne architecture with the buildings as, um, as men in suits with building heads and stuff, once that sort of hit me, I had to do it and the medium for it, it wanted to be black and white, it wanted to be monochrome yep, yep. and it wanted to be kind of mad and... And so it's sort of mixed medium and, you know, with madness and charcoal and then a bit of gold and, you know, I'll use what medium belongs to the idea. And you've actually produced quite a few books. How many books? Oh, too many. 26, yep. I think. But 26. There's some kids' books in there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on all you've done. And Thank you. And so much you've produced in the last two and a half years mm. since uh, I first interviewed you. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, we almost need to start a game with you because you've done so much. Moving on to Ted. Ted, hello. Hi, David. Now, you, you your background, as um, Marie said, was advertising, mm -hmm. uh, but then you mm -hmm. always were, you know, like you always loved paintings and you kept on doing it all through your career in advertising. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now, in later life, you're now concentrating on, on your um, art, and a lot of it is architecture. Why architecture? Um, it's always fascinated me. I just, there are buildings in Melbourne that I just absolutely love. A couple in particular, too, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, the Eureka Tower and the new 108 building particularly. Um, but something interesting happened a couple of years ago. Um, I go back 20 years, I was staying in a hotel on South Bank and I drew the panorama of the river and the city from the hotel um, uh, room. <laughs> sorry. Is that your, your I stomach? I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I drew the, the panorama and a couple of years ago I found that, that sketchbook on my shelf and I looked at it and I thought, this is interesting. So I went back to the hotel and said, look, I stayed here 20 years ago in room 704 because I'd written it in the front of the book. Do you think I could go back to the room and redraw it? And they said, oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Whoa. So they let me use the room for a yeah. few hours. Yeah. And what the real impact was the original drawing from that room, I could see right through to Mount Macedon. Mm. 
open spaces. I redrew it and I couldn't see any of yeah. them. The buildings yeah. had just grown. Yeah. And I think that's one of the exciting things about Melbourne is that it's constantly changing. Yeah. There's, that landscape changes. So I can just keep painting Melbourne mm. and not do the same thing every yeah. year. And, and for those people that aren't aware that that South Bank of, of Melbourne uh, was all warehouses. It was. Uh, yeah. and, you know, like the, and a few used car places down Clarendon right. Street End. Printers and, and Yeah, factories. and and, you know, like, and the fact is, and I always remember, what was the neon sign that was there? Um, Allen's. Allen's, Allen's, uh, that you would see Sweet. from uh, the other, other side of the river. So it's dramatically changed, yeah. and, and that's what you're capturing a lot of the time, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. So as I say, not, it's not just the city's changing, but the way that I paint it mm. is changing and yep. developing constantly. Yeah. Um, the new work is becoming a lot more abstract. Very. But you yeah. still... So what's going on in this little brain of yours? Are you, you know, like, are you going through this thing where you go, I'm, I'm going crazy, I need to paint crazy? No, is that it's, your, just your thoughts? A, it's just developing that way that it just gives the, the paintings a sort of character and feeling that you know, it's a very busy city and it's full of life. Um, full of movement, full of light, and I really tried to capture that right. as I sort of progressed through the paintings. Okay. Paul, you're so different to what Ted's doing, uh, and True. you've got this obsession with um, somewhere else in the world. What country? Yeah, I, I started my journey into Europe via Sicily, so Sicily's my go-to. I still return there. You know, that's 11, 12 times I've been back. But, uh, yeah, no, Sicily's been my connection to Melbourne, actually. And the the wonderful thing is that during COVID, you were actually, you, you found these people that were had drones up taking taking True. photos. True. And then you were using them to, to draw as yeah. well of, yeah. um, of Sicily. Uh, and how do you, what, what's your method of drawing? Um, well, I, I sort of been using sketchbooks mainly, and then I've even now during COVID, I, I went from a small sketchbook to a larger one. So I'm still using sketchbooks yep. as my. Um, and and so it's all pen on paper. Yeah, pen on paper. And it, so the detail is, you know, like you've got a lot of stop motion stuff on on your Instagram, and it's really fascinating watching you. You know, like it, it must take you forever uh, to uh, yeah, to draw I, one. I, I, in some respects, yes, but you know, I, I get the drawing down the first hour or so, and then after that, there's a lot of finishing, and I can go back. I can do 15 minutes at a time, yeah, and then I'll stop and go out and water the garden, and then come <laughs> back and do a bit more. So, it, it, look, everyone looks at it, and the first thing they ask of my drawings is, "How long does it take?" Yeah, you know, but I, I can't give you a defined yeah, because measure on that. But I, I, it, it isn't something I even think about anymore. I, I just once I start, I could have three or four going at once actually yeah. now. Right. So, and, and the thing is that during COVID as well, apart from the drones yeah. in Sicily, you, you went out on the streets of Melbourne. Did you yep. break curfews? Did, were you there when you shouldn't have been there? I know, I'm no, going to report you. No, I stuck you. to my 5Ks and I'm in balaclava, so that was quite good. <laughs> Wearing a balaclava. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we couldn't notice who you were. That's right. I had to sneak out occasionally. But, you know, I, actually, in some respects, some of the drawings are very early in the morning. And through winter, I was out there uh, drawing too with the be trees are bare, so I can see the buildings, as yep. we talked about yep. in the interviews. And um, I think it's compared with um, what Ted's doing and he expresses the growing city, uh, I've sort of gone back to the traditional buildings. Just one them, building. And looked at them as they've changed their function. You know, they've, they've changed and they've gone on a little bit, but I've looked at the original buildings, um, one of the drawings I've chosen for this exhibition is the first building they built in Melbourne University. And, uh, you know, I went back in there and again waited for the trees to <laughs> <Lose their leaves. laughs> drop their leaves and yeah. then drew the architecture. Yeah. Uh, but again, I'm fascinated by um, the fact that they're still standing, some of these buildings built in the 1800s. Yeah. And, you know, that's been a focus of mine yep. since. Now, 
Enzi, you've gone exactly the opposite direction with um, a lot of your art that you do, and you're obsessed with cranes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I keep on telling you, have you got a fetish <laughs> with cranes? And I'm, I think you might have. Poor Alan, you know, like what he must have to do in bed. Uh, so, so, so tell us, um, what is it about your art? Because I see you, I walk past um, your, your gallery um, and studio uh, quite a bit and, you know, like, and the, the pieces you're <coughs> using in this exhibition are extraordinary. So congratulations on them. Oh, thanks, Dave. And, very, and quite different to some of the other stuff you've done too. Well, I sort of like my art style changes um, and I don't know why, but it's just like having a different conversation with myself, but sometimes I think I feel pressure that if I have to do work for someone, I might, um, I might get a bit nervous and I'll try to get some, make something perfect. Whereas when I just paint for myself, I'm a bit more loose and more experimental and I'm not afraid, never afraid. Whereas if I've got maybe to do something for someone that might come in and I want to try to do well and yep. the artwork will change. But wouldn't that be the case for everyone? If you're doing a commission work, it would be, you know, like you go, oh, I'm, I've got to make sure I'm yeah. doing this the right way. So I think that affects it. Um, these works um, that I'll be exhibiting, they were made for um, a, a book um, by a lady called Judith Buckridge, who's doing a book on the Yarra River. So she asked me to do works for it. So um, I've done many just of the water, but I thought because I do um, build, um, paintings of constructions and Melbourne buildings, I thought I'd like to do the Yarra flowing through the city. So these works here, um, they, the construction is there and the buildings are there, but I also wanted to capture something that is very important to me, which is like the spirit or the things that I feel from a space. So the river, I, I, I felt it as a, as a being, as a, a moving thing that moves, has moved forever. And so that's a sort of like a spirit for me or, or the energy of life. So in my paintings, <coughs> the structures are there and <coughs> we are there, these buildings are there, Melbourne is there because of the Yarra River. And um, the Yarra River, especially when it, um, there were some waterfalls at Queen's Bridge, and that's where the Yarra River, the sweetness of the Yarra River, was able to be maintained before it went into the ocean. So for me, the, where Queen's Bridge is, it's like the Holy Grail of, the, of Melbourne. Because, because of that, because we could live here, they decided to make the city, a beautiful city of Melbourne. So whenever I see Melbourne or whatever I do, I always have a feeling of wonder and I like to show that through my works. So the city and these big monsters and big things that you look up, so grand. They're called buildings. Buildings. Um, or uh, cranes. Yeah. Or cranes. <laughs> you know, you've got to get the cranes yeah. in. Them as well because they, they are these huge monsters and even like um, the, the, the spire, anything that, you know, reaches up. But they've got a different structure. They have got this see-through pattern work yep, going. Yeah. Well, and you're a little bit obsessed with um, uh, triangles and diamonds as well. Yeah, I think that comes from maybe... It, maybe that's another fetish, is it? Well, I, well, it's something that comes through and sometimes you don't even know why it's there. But, it's, but if you actually look at Melbourne at the moment, there's a lot of triangles in our buildings. It's everywhere. Yeah, mm. and there's pattern works. It's that Federation Square thing. Yeah. yeah. It's on yeah. trams, it's on yes. Fed Square. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in, yeah. it's in so many buildings in the city. It's and the spire and echoed and echoed. At, yeah. The, yeah. at the art centre. Yeah. yeah, and it's a very easy um, shape to play with because you can either go very precise mm. or you can just go, you know, Mm. whatever you like, which is what I like to do. So there's a little bit of structure for me, but there's a little bit of play for me as mm. well. Mm. So maybe I like that tension okay. and thing happening. Peter, um, you're a photographer, so yes. you're very different to the, the other four. Do you feel like you're an outsider with this lot? <laughs> or you know, like, do you think you're, you're much better than they are? Mm -hmm. No, I think uh, photography is a higher art form. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and, they're going to murder me if I'm <laughs> <laughs> We love <laughs> photography. Yeah. Uh, but what I love about um, you, 
you, you take your photo, but then you manipulate it in the most wonderful... Explain to, to our viewers. Well, what I do... Uh, so the urban environment's my interest, and yep. I love cities. Yep. Um, I, I think I fell in love with uh, modern cities when I came to Melbourne. My dad worked on the second modernist office building in Melbourne. He was a contractor. Uh, and I, about nine years of age, and I came from Geelong, and there was nothing more magical than coming to Melbourne. Um, but in the last few years, uh, because of my photography career as a professional started about eight years ago, for my personal enjoyment, I was taking photos of modern buildings. Uh, so my interest stemmed from when I was a kid. And I originally would just uh, do the, a very classic thing of standing at the street level, mm. looking up at the, mm. these nice, shiny bright uh, totems to capitalism's success. <laughs> that sounds... Mm. Uh, yeah. Very deep. <laughs> yeah. Very deep no, for this part. <laughs> sounds like I spat, it, spat that out. But, um, so then uh, I actually uh, did a Master of Arts in Photography and I... So I'd started to manipulate my photos. I'd change the colour of the sky or change the colour of the building using Photoshop. And I did a Master of Arts in Photography and that gave me um, a handle on, on crea uh, creating a concept, having a, an idea and, and creating a body of work. So parallel with my interest in, in modern architecture and the bright, shiny success, capitalism success, were the spaces in between, the, pa the places that people pass through that they barely notice. Yep. So then, so what I would do is take a photo of, um, it might just be, uh, a wall with a pathway, uh, which on its own is is very uninteresting. And what I do is separate out, uh, remove elements that weren't, weren't necessary for the image yep. and bring in other elements yep. and clean up the image so that yep. it has a slight, just a hint of surrealism, mm -hmm. but still very real. And I actually um, quote quite often about a particular uh, painter. Who, who do I say that you're, you're similar to? Um, Van Gogh. Oh, no, <laughs> Jeffrey Smart. Jeffrey Smart, very <laughs> Jeffrey Smart. Yeah. But Jeffrey Smart every now and then has a person mm. in it where you don't. I have one image with a person in it. Yeah. One? Yeah. Hey, you're like outrageous, <laughs> one person. It's a self-portrait. A self-portrait, <laughs> yeah. And he took a photo of himself in a mirror. You know, it's like his that. passport. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so what, what does it mean to you to be part of an exhibition like this with... Um, for other artists who are all very different, on purpose, mm -hmm. and um, and you know coming together for an exhibition on architecture. Mm -hmm. That's a hard question to answer. Um, it's only night eleven o'clock in the morning or something. So. <laughs> oh, um, but it will be eight o'clock at night when this is going to air. Okay. Well, then, then uh, I've been at. Uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, the thing as a photographer and sitting in a computer and manipulating images is that you work alone and there's no need for collaboration in, in doing that. And I think what's great is the ability to, like I, I know uh, Marie and Enza already, and, but to meet a couple of other artists as well. And we, I think as, as artists, we always learn from other artists mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter uh, what, what, what their discipline. genre is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, There's always some inspiration, something to, to be learnt from them. Mm. And particularly because we've got five people doing uh, uh, architecturally themed work, uh, that, 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 that uh, that's interesting in itself, mm. just to see how other people approach mm. that, mm. the subject of architecture. So... Uh, Marie, I asked you if um, we could do it in your gallery and you mm. uh, kindly said yes. Uh, as a gallery owner as well and the, one of the artists involved, what, what does an uh, a exhibition like this mean, mean to you, you know, like, and putting it on in your gallery? Oh, it's, it's in the same vein as a lot of other themes that people can find at Melbourne Style, obviously because it's about Melbourne. So that's an obvious connection. Um, and because of these artists, I know these people, it's lovely to have that community and have them share in. As you were just saying, David, that, um, Peter, that um, <laughs> we're going to do this all day. <laughs> um, that, that even though you're from dif you, you work in different disciplines and they can, can be completely different disciplines, the expression of an idea 
in this case Melbourne architecture in another person's um, you know another person's expression of that does cross pollinate and it just maybe sparks things off and it always has been thus with artists right back to well dawn of time but you know really notably at Heidi with Tucker and um, and mm, Nolan, yeah, because yeah. because Tucker was doing that Picasso reductive stuff when Nolan clocked him in the in his studio, mm. and that's when the light went off for Nolan about doing the the Kelly head. Yep. And even though you know they're doing different things, um, you don't know where you're going to take inspiration. Of the thing about art is you have to be open to the world, and you know you might get an idea from a tram conductor. If we had them anymore, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, you might get an idea from you know from a dog or a child or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Whatever, and it doesn't necessarily. People can't often understand that the weirdness of how something pops into your mind that you might overlay into your own work. It could be Parmigiana, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Gee, I must be hungry. Um, but uh, so this is great, having this work together. And plus, I think from, for the viewer, for the, um, the gallery wanderer, they can come into the gallery and see the, a diversity of expressions of a single concept or a single idea or a single mm. place and a diversity of ways of rendering things and the diverse, diversity of actual, you know, like there, there can be sort of forensic kind of overtones or spiritual overtones, mine are sort of somewhat political maybe <laughs> <laughs> and historical and, you know, emotional sort of, there's different um, disciplines at play, different mediums. So yeah, I think it's um, offering Melbourne um, gallery visitors something interesting to look at in, the, yeah. in their own place. Yeah. Mm. And it's a celebration of the Art Hunters mm. 100 hey. shows, hey. you know. Yes. Um, and you know, really, you talked talking before about working alone. I, uh, with AI coming in, there's going to be a lot of working alone. But this sort of art is really important that it continues and the local nature of it is really important that it continues because we don't know what we'll be looking at art-wise, film-wise or anything. Yeah, so. in the future. Yeah. And, and that's what the Art Hunt is about, is giving a platform yeah. for artists on, you know, like on varying degrees, visual artists, performing artists, um, authors, you know, like the, the whole, mm. whole lot. Um, that's what I'm offering mm. uh, here is that exposure. Mm -hmm. So, Ted, you know, like you, you work out of uh, um, a factory that is a collective of um, artists, uh, but you... You've all got your own area and you close your door and I say, do you mix, very, and I've said to you when I've been out there, do you mix very often with the other people? You said, no, not really. So, but it's, you know, like, is it important though to chat with other artists at times? Occasionally, uh, yeah. I mean, I think sometimes you need feedback on the work that you're doing and make sure that you are sort of going in the right direction and you haven't totally lost the plot. <laughs> um, but where I am out at uh, um, the studios out at Footscray, mm. um, it's become really quite interesting. Um, we've got a, a glass blower just moving in, so oh, okay. I'm really mm. sort of looking forward to to sort of learning about yeah, glass yeah. blowing. Because um, you you do a, a, a few different things, don't you? you know, yeah. Like, um, uh, you've done vases and um, coffee mugs and. Yeah. Oh, and the coffee mugs, I, I love them because they're actually like the takeaway yeah, coffee mugs. Yeah, it was just a, a thought. I had I had an exhibition that was called Eureka because the painting sort of focused on the Eureka. And part of that was um, the coffee cups and it was the sort of sense of taking something that was disposable and turning it into non-disposable. Um, and it had that little twist to it. And the vases um, were produced uh, with a technique called graffito, which is scratched mm. into the clay and then uh, fired. So they were traditional blue and white. And the bee on my hat uh, was a part of that exhibition that was made by um, Janet Marnell Brown um, that related back to the Eureka Tower with the, the bees on the tower. Yeah. Bee sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was a full circle. But I also make... Um, Prints. I do a lot of printmaking, um, but that's very different because I produce that on computer, and so they're very tight, mm. very sort of graphic. And do you like working on a computer, or do you like the freedom of splashing paint around? From from lo looking at your paintings, I I see that you you would like splashing the paint around. 
Yeah, but the program that I use on the computer allows me some sort of okay. freedom. It's, a, a, a call, it's called Painter, and you can dial in any medium you, you like, and it will respond in that way. Right. So I could put in oil paint, and the effect would be oil right. paints. Yep. And I can still use the sort of random gestures that okay. that um, occur in my paintings. But as I say, traditionally, I've become a lot tighter mm. when I'm doing the, the prints. Paul, you know, like, they're talking about computers. You must go, oh, my God, I would <laughs> never go onto no, a computer. No, he's, the, oh, he's I, a computer uh, genius. Yes, I, I work on my computer. <laughs> That's what I do <laughs> for a living. For, for a living, but not <laughs> so, for your art, though. No, I, I well, no, I, we've had that conversation with Marie at one stage where I brought in my work and... Um, for an exhibition at Melbourne Style and um, she was, we were having a conversation about, oh, maybe prints. And I said, well, they're all original drawings. How do you, if I put one print up on the mm. wall, mm. then people won't be able to see the difference because the quality of the print's going to be mm. as good as the drawing. Yeah. Um, so I had to draw a line in saying, well, reproduction, I'm not going to go to the computer, I'm not going to reproduce these. They are original on paper and stick to it, you know, like, yep. uh, although I must admit, I've dragged out a print of a drawing. It happens to be on a skateboard, but it's ready for this exhibition. Mm. And it, it's, uh, it's the first time I've really gone, right, okay, there's a reproduction print in my collection. It's like, there's a person in the architecture of yeah. Peter's. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden I've got a printed yeah. thing on a wall. And that's yeah. very unusual. It's the politics you know? of the politics of print and limited edition, and so mm. on. And you need yeah. to kind of identify the volume and body of the work for the person who wants to mm. buy it, so mm. they know in advance exactly what it is, if it's part of a series or if it's a one-off, and so on. Yeah. And I mean, Paul's work conjures in your mind that idea of the engraving, which, you know, because it's very similar to those early um, yeah. Victorian engravings. And in Victorian engravings would be a limited edition engraving, um, you know, edition. Yeah. And um, I think I'll leave that to my children to do. Maybe. Uh, so maybe they'll all take an original and yeah, but, you know, but, organise uh, how, a print as an like, edition. But there's what, they're one-ofs, what, yeah. what you're doing, yeah. uh, and which is makes it very special. Um, in a way, well, no, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no. serious here. Yeah. You know, like, it's the I'm same a... with photography. Yeah, you know, because mm. there can be more than one, or there can be just one. Yep, yep. And, I mean, and it's up to you know the artists to to work out what they think mm. they might want to, <sighs> what form they want to yeah. take. Um, you don't do printing at all, do you? I have uh, in the past. But what I found was that um, it took so much time and it's a whole other business and it took me away oh, from my art. School. And um, so I do love prints, but then I thought, you know what, all your time is going on this, it's not easy, then you've got to try to sell them. And you can't stand talking to people in your, uh, in your that's right. gallery. That's right, right? I have to leave the every gallery. Time, every and time I'm... I walk past you, you're standing right. talking to somebody. <laughs> yeah. uh, but... Um, yeah, yeah, Paul, we're actually mentioning about uh, on a skateboard. Just, just <laughs> tell our, our viewers about the skateboard situation if they haven't seen your Art Hunter interview. Yeah, I, I, we were talking about communities and, you know, there's a skate community out there, there's a graffiti community out there, the arts community. With the skateboard community, it's a very tight little group and um, I was involved in it a, a little bit only because of my stepson, who was quite a famous skateboarder, and um, he sadly passed away. But the whole group gathers around you and all of a sudden I'm getting, you know, commissions for skateboards and drawings on skateboards mm -hmm. and uh, from LA, which was quite flattering. And so I, I took that on as an exercise and, um, and they give you excellent permission to just be creative. They don't put any restrictions on it. Yes, they have a brand and a mark and I have to address that. But other than that, it was, it was the freedom of actually being able to do something in that uh, same artistic group. They're artists in their own way. So yeah, that was where that skateboarding uh, sort of drawing or set it, there were two drawings, yep. two skateboards, but yep. they, they uh, sold out rather quickly and um, the two skaters were involved. 
signed their limited edition and they sold quickly and all of a sudden, you know, um, they become valuable because there's no more printing yep, of those. Yep. So, yeah, um, it's been Fantastic. quite a good exercise. Okay, here, here we go. Um, I'm so thrilled that, that um, the five of you are, are part of this exhibition. Marie, what have you named it, the exhibition? Citivas. What does that mean? Oh, it's Latin and it's <laughs> fabulously evocative about the relationship between the citizen and the city. You know, yeah, it's um, an expression of the city, okay. basically. Brilliant. Mm. And it's only on for a couple of weeks, couple the, of weeks. the exhibition. Yeah. Um, what uh, but what, what I really um, uh, hope that will happen is that you've un all got, only got a few pieces in it for obvious reasons, but you're like, people will discover you and you're like, and, and hopefully will then go looking at uh, for your art um, you're like, on social media. Um, so it's, uh, it's a, a great opportunity for exposure for you um, all. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Mm. And wh when mm. does it open? 16th, I think, September from memory to the 30th. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you hope? I hope. Uh, you hope that's the date. The details tonight. will be flashed up uh, on the screen. They'll be flashed on the screen, yes, as well. Yep. Uh, look, I can't thank you enough for being part of, of this and making it all happen. Uh, it's, uh, it's really special for me because um, I want to get the name out there of The Art Hunter to encourage more people to watch um, different shows of The Art Hunter and w what better way on a, as part of our 100th celebration mm. to do this exhibition. So thank you and we'll see you at um, Melbourne Style yep. real soon. Yep. Thank you for thank watching. You. Uh, thank you for watching, everyone. It's been a pleasure uh, doing the show today with these five wonderful artists. I'm David Hunt, and we'll be back again next week. We're getting very close to that hundredth episode. See ya.